Welcome to the Forecourt E channel. On today's video, we've got a little road trip for you. So I'm going to be taking this humble little 22 kilowatt hour Renault Zoe up the country about 150 miles. So these cars have a range of around 70 to 75 miles on a full battery. Um, and we're going to do 140, 150 miles in this one today. Um, so as we go through the journey, I'm going to show you what that looks like, uh, how I'm going to charge up once or twice on the way. Um, and then ultimately get the car charged up close to the destination as well for the end customer who I'm delivering this car to. So stay tuned, it's going to be a good video today. For anyone who doesn't know too much about the Renault Zoe, I'll give you a quick rundown. So I'm driving today a 63 plate Renault Zoe. So this is one of the first ones that was launched in the UK uh, back in 2013. And this one has a 22 kilowatt hour battery. So for those first few years that this car was released, they all had a 22 kilowatt hour battery. Um, and that turns into a real world range, as I mentioned earlier, of about 70 to 75 miles. So on the dash here, full battery, of course, for setting off. Um, it is showing 75. So I'll just reset the trip counter there and we'll see how many we actually get. For the journey today, I did a little bit of planning last night, only about 10 minutes, uh, but I used one of our favorite apps called Zap Map. So I put in the start, at Limington, of course, at the office, um, and I put in our destination about 140 miles to the north, and I picked a couple of charging slots. So I used the really easy filters on Zap Map, and I was able to select the, the connector type, which is on the Renault Zoe, which is just the type two, so no CCS, which I'll come to later. and what I did was I used that filter to choose a charger on my way. So the first charger that I'm going to now is 53 miles from Livington. It should leave around 20 miles spare in the battery. Uh, but the reason I chose a charger that wasn't a little bit further is the first reason that on this route there aren't a lot of chargers. I'm taking the country route um, just for a change of scene and it's bank holiday. So I just want to stay off the motorways just in case it does get busy. Um, and the second reason is, if for any reason that charger isn't working, I've still got plenty of battery to just carry on my journey and go to the next one. So on a, on a car with a larger battery, it might not be something that I'd worry about too much, but I'm just going to play it safe today just to give me a really stress-free day and just make that trip a little bit easier. Now, I appreciate that a lot of people buy these cars for a second car. So many of the 22 kilowatt hour Zoe's that we've sold they sit on someone's driveway as a second car and um, they're not necessarily the only car in the household and it's a great way to get, make your way into electric uh, by doing that so these cars will typically doing the school run they might do a commute you know you could do a 25 30 mile commute each way to work in this car uh, quite happily if you've got the facility to charge at home or at work um, and that's what most people seem to be buying these cars for and that's that's where we've sold the most into those into those families and I appreciate a trip like this. Is it something you might regularly think about doing in a car like this with the um, smaller battery, especially nowadays as most cars do have a larger battery, if not all of them. So this video is just to give you a bit of an idea of, of just how it can be done really and um, how scary it isn't. The model of Zoe that I'm driving today is a dynamic intense model. So if you see the word intense within the model derivative, you know that it's the fastest charging uh, option of the Zoe. So a really good option if you are thinking to do some of these longer trips. So we can charge this car on the right charger uh, from 10% up to 80% in just over half an hour. And hopefully that's what we'll be able to do today. Again, using those filters on ZapMap um, that is the charges that I've selected uh, for this journey. So hopefully that's what we'll be able to do on our little trip this morning and get those fastest charge speeds so that we're sat on the chargers for the shortest amount of time, which is of course what everybody wants. The Renault Zoe's do actually come really well equipped, even these ones which are slightly older now. So bearing in mind we sold this car in April 2023 for just six and a half thousand pounds. 
In here we've got a reverse camera, rear parking sensors, it's got Bluetooth, DAB radio, uh, USB to connect my phone, automatic gearbox of course, absolute winner. And then on the touch screen here in the middle, um, it has got built-in sat-nav, this has got speed cameras built-in, DAB radio, and of course I can play my music through my phone. And then a few nice little features as well, so automatic headlights, automatic wipers, just the little things I think do make a difference. And it has got a proper handbrake as well, manual handbrake, which a lot of people actually uh, do prefer than the electronic handbrake, yeah. So really well equipped, will actually be quite a comfortable little drive uh, today, hopefully. And yeah, looking forward to it. Okay, we're almost at the end of the first leg now, so the efficiency of the car has actually been really good. Um, we've been driving at about nine or 10 degrees, so not the warmest of mornings, certainly. Um, but the mileage as terms of what I've done and what the car predicted is almost bang on So I'll show you that when I stop at the charger in a few minutes uh, But I just wanted to also say uh, driving through rural Hampshire for the last hour or so Absolutely stunning if you've not been down to this part of the country Absolutely well worth a visit. There's a few little towns and villages that I've never seen there before Absolutely stunning. So Anyway, I'll stop blathering on. I'm almost at the charger now. So let's have a look and see just how efficient this little car's been on our first leg of the journey. Okay, so you may notice that we didn't really stay very long in Marlborough there. So beautiful town, by the way, I'm going to have to pop back and visit Marlborough. But behind the waitress there on the high street, they had a really good setup. So Shell Recharge has been in there um, and they've put a great big rapid charger in, great for people passing through the town. And then next to that is six type two charge points with really nice parking, wide parking spaces right there in the middle of town, perfect. So that was the point where I got to and as I was pulling into the charging spot, I noticed that I actually still had 21 miles of range left. Now, when I set off, I mentioned that I would hope to arrive with around 20 miles of range, and yeah, we were pretty much bang on. Um, so I thought there's actually not too much point waiting here. I knew at that point it was 59 miles uh, from there to my next planned charging point, and I would have to wait there in Marlborough until the car was almost full again. So what I decided to do was I jumped on the zap map and I found another charger, another 15 miles up the road. So we're gonna be taking the car fairly close to empty, but I looked around this charger that I'd like to go to and there's another five or six chargers all within a mile. So if that one's busy or if it's not working, the zap map app does say it's online, so I'm not too worried. Uh, but if for any reason there is an issue, I know that there's a whole bunch more chargers really close by, um, so it should be absolutely fine. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna push on few more miles and um, get a few more miles under the belt and get us a little closer to our destination yes yeah, so 21 miles left of range according to the dashboard and 15 miles to go let's do it Okay, so here we are. Here's the facts for you. So 67 and a half miles driven and we've got nine miles range there estimated left on the dash. So I'm really, really happy with that. It said 75 when we set off and it's been pretty much bang on, hasn't it? So let's get this little Zoe on charge. Here I am at the wonderful Harvester in Swindon. Now this was about yeah, half a mile just off the dual carriageway there, so really handy. And as I just showed you on the dash there, got there with some great mileage. So 
to connect this car to the charger, it's a, a Polar BP Charge Master charge station. Um, and this charger has got three cables all tethered. So you can see here we've got CCS, Chadamo, and then this is where the AC cable was, which I've used. So straight in there and using the touch screen, it was really easy to get the charge started. So I just used the guest button there and tapped my contactless card on this reader here and the car started charging pretty much straight away so really happy about that and it's charging really fast so for a 22 kilowatt hour battery which is obviously quite small and um, it said 45 minutes to charge to full using the 43 kilowatt charger so excellent I'm gonna get a little bit of work done on my laptop and I'll talk to you soon And that's us back on the road. So again, dead happy with the car. I don't know if you can see from my face, but genuinely dead chuffed with how the little Zoe's going. So on a 43 kilowatt charger back there, best case scenario for a little car like this. Um, and we managed to get the battery back up to 99% now. I wouldn't normally stay on a charger for that long and charge the car that high. Um, the battery charge speed definitely drops off as soon as you get above 80% and it almost plummeted. Um, however, it was only half an hour to get back up to 99% um, and there was no one else in the car park. It was super early and um, the place wasn't even open yet. No one else was waiting to use the charger, so I wasn't holding anyone up. It was no inconvenience to anyone else for me to be sat there. And now for me, it means that I don't have to stop now again, hopefully um, until we get to the town where our customer lives. So the second leg of the journey now, I guess, um, we've got 64 miles to go. Um, and I've got again 73 miles back in the battery so this next leg is a bit of a different trip so the first half of the, the trip there was um, a lot of country roads a lot of windy country roads passing through villages and things like that and this next leg is mainly what I'm on now so dual carriageway and a bit of motorway as well so it'll be really interesting to see how the car does and um, I've got every faith now that we'll, we'll get there um, should in theory have 11 miles to spare when we reach our local charger at the end point again I've picked a 43 kilowatt charger so that we can get a nice uh, good amount of battery in there before we deliver the car to our customer so he's not stuck um, and he can obviously have a good test drive so yeah let's see how it goes and back on the road Time for a little progress update. So I'm now 32 miles down the road from the Harvester charging station back there, and I've got 32 miles to go. And on the dash, we have 34 miles of range. So I'm really conflicted right now. There's a service services on the M5 here in 10 miles uh, where I know I can charge up. Um, even if I just stop for five minutes, um, it'll give me obviously uh, just that little bit more of a safety net to get there but I am quite tempted just to push on and just see how we go and um, that last 20 miles or so there aren't really many other options and um, so if I did get it wrong and the gap closed and we weren't able to make it I would then have to go a little bit further out of my way um, and it would actually mess my day up quite a little bit so I'm just now toying in my head what to do uh, let me know in the comments what you would do at this point um, yeah, I'm having a bit of a mental conflict here, so let's figure it out. Hopefully I didn't just seal my fate there by driving past the services. The last 10 miles or so, um, the battery range has been consistently between two and three miles, more than what I've got to get to get to this next, next charger. So fingers crossed, we'll stay true to that and we'll reach this charger with no more dramas. Um, the last few miles of the journey are on, as we come off the motorway, they're on much slower roads, so the car will be more efficient. 
uh, and I'm hoping that will be absolutely fine. In the back of my mind, I do know that this car is on a Renault battery lease, um, which does include um, free breakdown cover across Europe in case the car runs out of battery, battery is included. They will pick me up and take me to a charger, but obviously I do not want to be using that service. Um, if I thought there was a real risk, obviously I wouldn't be doing this. But I believe in the little Zoe. Let's do it, we'll be absolutely fine. No worries, we'll be there in about yeah, 20 minutes. Excuse me, do you know where the electric car charger is in this car park? It's over there. Thank you, mate. And that is it. Well, the question I'm asking myself now is, why on earth was I ever worried? Honestly, I'm so proud of this little Zoe. Um, yeah, so we had about a two mile gap when we set off right when I left you and we've arrived here with 11 miles to spare. So 64 miles driven, 11 miles to spare, which is bang on 75 expected range, which is exactly what it said when it set off. Um, and that was doing dual carriageway, motorway, pretty much the whole way. Now, granted, I was in eco mode um, while I was using the cruise control, cruising along, and I'm honestly blown away by what this Zoe's done today. So. If I look at the dash, yeah, 135 miles done this morning. Um, and it's essentially almost drained the battery completely empty twice. So in terms of cost, um, we charge the car at the unit overnight. Um, and to charge that from empty to full cost us at the unit about five or six pounds. Uh, and then my little top up earlier on today cost us about nine pounds. So if you think that's about 15 pounds cost um, overall there to get, to get up to here, almost 140 miles, um, if I was to do the same journey in a petrol car, you'd be looking at anywhere from around 25 to 30 pounds, um, I reckon, with today's fuel prices. So it's pretty much half the price. And if we would have charged at home using something like an Octopus Intelligent or Octopus Go, um, or the new Ovo EV rate, um, that overnight charge would have cost us literally about two pounds, um, plus the little bit more expensive bit uh, on the journey. But of course, you're paying for the convenience of that really fast charge when you're on the move. So yeah, absolutely unbelievable. Um, for the money, yeah, as I said earlier, this car is just sold for six and a half grand. It's 10 years old. It's only got 31,000 miles, full Renault service history. Like there are some absolute gems out there, absolute bargains out there, um, definitely to be had. I'll just touch on the battery lease, which I mentioned earlier. And um, that is 49 pounds a month, but that's a payment directly to Renault. Um, and that guarantees the life of the battery. So full battery warranty as long as you're paying that lease you can buy it out at any point in time so to buy this particular one out um, is about 1800 pounds again direct, directly to Renault but as long as you keep paying that lease your battery is covered um, for life essentially um, and you just pay that lease every month and it also includes that breakdown cover so worth every penny in my opinion um, but we did test the battery health on this car uh, last week and it's 88%. So anyone worried about um, batteries deteriorating, you know, getting thrown in the bin or being useless after 10 years, I've literally just done, you know, 135 miles in a 10 year old electric car. No problems at all. The battery's absolutely still really good and at 88% that is completely normal degrade degradation, if not very good um, for the age of the car and that will start to slow down now as well. So absolutely no worries at all there with the little zoe and um, we're just topping it up here now before i drop it off to the customer after we've been through the jet wash of course so it's nice and clean when it rocks up on their driveway uh, but yeah that's good I'll, I'll end the video there if you've got any questions and if you've watched this far thank you very much for watching uh, drop any questions in the comments below or check out our website we've got loads more stuff like this and loads of how-to guides on living with an ev and things to look for before you buy an ev um, or if you want us to find you a car just like this, an uh, absolutely bargain price, which they are at the moment, genuinely, uh, just get in touch and we'll be more than happy to do that. And of course, we'll always look after you. Thanks for watching again and we'll see you in the next video.